Hello, now we're going to uh, talk about what we do when we have nonlinear data. We'll still want to make it linear so we can deal with our r and r squared values. Uh, in order to do this, we do what we call linearizing the data sets. So we take something nonlinear and make it linear. Well, first off, we have to know how we can tell if a data set is nonlinear. And what we'll do is we first graph the residual plots. So we graph those residual plots and we look for any major curve. If there's any curve in the residual plots, then we know that something's wrong. But also if there's some fans, we know that the residual plot is good, or the graph is good at one end, but not the other end of the data set. Well, let's see what happens. <coughs> Sometimes we graph data like this, the brain weight and body weight of mammals. And when we do so, uh, it's not clear that there's a linear pattern here. But we can use logarithms, and in this case, locking both variables makes quite a linear uh, graph. And so, uh, so from that line, we can find out what the actual equation is uh, once we can find a linear regression with the logs. So first, what we need to do to explore this is uh, pull down a graph in Fathom, and we're going to look at the mammals. So I'm going to graph my brain weight up here and my body weight on the x. Now, the data set was actually just this data set down here. They didn't include these outliers, but we can even include those outliers uh, when we're dealing with Fathom, and uh, it'll, it will work great. So when you look at data and you want to see if that's the most linear data that, I could, that we could get, what we want to do is log the y-axis first and ask yourself if that's any more linear. And I think the question should be no. That's not linear at all. Now let's log the x-value. And when you do that, it looks like a, a, a almost surprisingly linear situation. So now what we do is go up to a graph and find the least squares regression line. Now I'm going to take this and bring it back here. And from our least squares regression line, it tells us the log of brain weight is equal to 0.752 times the log of body weight plus 0.93. The R squared is quite high at 0.92, so that's good that, it, that uh, the um, that there's a strong relationship between these variables. So now to figure out what the actual equation would be is we'd have to get rid of these logs. So we have a log on both sides, so I'll take 10 to the log of brain. I'll shorten that to just be brain. Uh, is 10 to the 0.752 log of body. And then since that's plus, we can say times 10 to the 0.93. Now 10 to the log of brain will just be brain. And uh, this is our number that we usually like to write up front, 10 to the 0.93. I'll get my calculator out. So we have 10 to the 0.93 is 8.51. So that I like to write out in front. And 10 to the log of body will bring body down here. But now that strands, it leaves the 0.752 into the exponent. So this right here is the best fit equation for the original data set. Now what we can do is we can go back to this data set and graph it. <clears throat> so what we would have to do is put in the original data. And now this line doesn't make sense. So we're going to get rid of the least squares regression line. And we're going to plot a function. Our function is going to be brain weight equals 8.51 times uh, our brain weight to the power, which we just hit that little carrot button, and uh, the power was 
and when we hit OK, this line here is going to be the best line to fit these data points. All right, hopefully that made sense and you can do the rest of the problems. Good luck.